flat, isn't it? Just a little bit. Just, so just a wee just, little, I'm sorry. What do you mean on the high end? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite yeah. human beings, let alone one of my favorite banjo players, Charlie Cushman. Charlie, tell us a little bit about how you got started playing, who your in major musical influences, and then we'll let you talk back and forth a moment with the owner of that fine uh, okay. RB3. Well, uh, I got interested in bluegrass and particularly five string banjo uh, when I was about four years old in 1963, 64. Uh, seeing Flat Scruggs TV show uh, I'm from about 40 miles northwest of Nashville so uh, every time we turned the radio on Flat Scruggs were on the television they were on and uh, uh, we got up at our house you know, early in the morning I was from a middle-class family that mother and dad both worked and you didn't get up at five o'clock in the morning to eat your breakfast you didn't get it <laughs> that was not an option you had to get up and eat <laughs> So we always had Flat Scruggs on the radio in those days when they when they were doing their Martha White show, and watched them on uh, WSM TV on uh, uh, Saturday afternoons. And of course, they come on amongst the Wilbur Brothers and Ford Wagner and basically a lot of the uh, the current day country music, you know, which had fiddles and steel guitars. And then all of a sudden, you get this thing. Right up in the middle of all these TV shows, Flat Scruggs, I think, come on at 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon, kind of in the midst of of the country shows, and you got this, this banjo that's just really got my attention when I was a kid. Uh, it's kind of like a, maybe a kid hearing rock and roll for the first time, you know, in comparison to the other shows that were on, and that's, that's how I got interested in the banjo. And... Um, I started asking my parents and my grandparents, uh, you know, how things are. If your parents won't get it for you, your grandparents probably will. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid. So I wouldn't get anywhere with my parents very much. So mm -hmm. I started hounding my, my grandparents about it. And uh, my granddaddy was a janitor at, uh, at the Baptist Church there in town and uh, made very little money. And my, my grandmother worked at the hospital as a tray girl, which a tray girl's the person who delivers the food to the patients in the room. So anyway, they raked and scraped and got 60 or 70 dollars together and bought me a, a Tisco Del Rey banjo with the accent about that high, and <laughs> brass frets and rusty strings and the headstock had been broke off and repaired, no resonator. And uh, of course I wanted a resonator so at the music store uh, where they got the banjo, we looked in the catalog and bought a, a Bakelite resonator to put on it, you know. And the banjo just shredded my fingers, you know, just ate, ate them up. But, uh, anyway, that's that's how I got started. Right. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, I, somehow as a kid, I knew that this banjo was in the house. It was coming, Christmas time was coming around the corner. Right. And I could just sense that there was a banjo in the house. So I, without them knowing, I started looking all over the house. Yeah, there you go. Sweet. <laughs> and I finally got down in the basement and, and, yes. and got it where my grandmother kept all her quilts and her uh, pots and pans that she didn't use anymore and old bedroom sets and mattresses and stuff like that. And I crawled up under a bed and, and I found this banjo. Mm -hmm. And I got it out. It was uh, fortunately it was in tune, and I remember I picked out. Picked that out on it. But I had to do it real quietly, you know, so so mm -hmm. that I wouldn't let them know that I knew that there was a banjo in the house. But I'd sneak down there every day and at least at least get it out and look yeah. at it, you know, and stuff. And uh, anyway, so Christmas came. And sure enough, I got the banjo. And, and there was one guy that uh, that worked at our basically our only music store. The other music store we had was they sold band instruments, but this this music store sold uh, uh, stringed instruments, and they were a Gibson dealer and a Martin and a Fender dealer. And uh, there was a guy working there that uh, uh, 
that drove to Nashville every now and then to play a session. He was a real good electric guitar player. Mm -hmm. And he, he could play Cripple Creek and Cumberland Gap and maybe a couple other tunes, Three Finger Style, on the banjo. So uh, we, uh, my dad and I went down there and, and uh, worked out some arrangements to get lessons every Saturday. So when I first started, we started with a Mel Bay book playing with a flat pick, mm -hmm. and we were playing. You know, stuff like that. Right. And I was like... You weren't hearing so, Earl at that so, point, so this, is what you're telling yeah. us? <laughs> yeah, and being a kid, you know, um, I was taught to be, you know, real respectful of, respectable of the adults. And mm -hmm. So a few months later, I finally, I finally told my the guy that was showing me, I said, you know, this is good and everything, but I'm, I, I want to play that role thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I saw you do, you know, when you told me you could play Cripple Creek and stuff. So then we, we came out of the Mel Bay Fun with the Banjo book and went to <laughs> the Mel Bay Sonny Osborne book, which Sonny Osborne had a book out right. through Mel Bay at that time. And uh, and it, it got in to more of a Scrug style, or a, it, it actually a Scrug style playing. And and I learned um, Cripple Creek and and Cumberland Gap and all this stuff and and uh, this was all within say one year of each other and uh, and my daddy told me see if you never learn to play Cripple Creek like Earl Scruggs and play along with the record mm -hmm. he said I'll buy you I'll buy you a better banjo now there's an incentive program so, yeah and my of course my next in my mind, my, the next best banjo, I could, I had never seen a Gibson before, so I was not aware of Gibsons, but there was this banjo called an Alvarez. It was made in Japan, it cost $200. Right. And, uh, and I told Dad, I said, that's, that's what I want. And Major they had, step up. They had one in stock, you know. And, okay. And it had a nice hard shell brown case with it, and, and nice frets, and it didn't hurt my fingers, you know, and it had a real resonator and a flange, and, and stuff. So anyway, I sat down and started working on this uh, Crip Creek, and I got to where I could I made me a capo out of a pencil and a rubber band, or two or three rubber bands wrapped <laughs> around there, and took that old friction fifth pig and pulled it up to A, and would sit there with the Flat and Scruggs record and try my best to keep up with that record, you know. And uh, finally, Daddy said, "Okay, so that's good. That's that's close enough. I'll buy you the album." Okay, so I got the Alvarez. Next thing I know, they get in an RB100. <laughs> and this banjo was so special that they had a showcase behind the counter, not where you could walk up to it, you could look behind the counter and see it. But they had an RB100 hanging in there. Uh, from the, they had, had wire around the, the keys there, and it was a glass showcase. And they had a little light that they turned on. And that made me think that an RB100 was, you know, one of the crown jewels, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that, you know how, how we are, we all want the next best thing. So anyway, that banjo hung there and the price tag on it was $365. I thought, man, I'll never get that. They'll, they'll never buy that for me. Mm -hmm. And about long about that time, I ran into a guy at the music store. Uh, and he, he was a quite a bit older than me. He's about 15 years older than me. And he could play anything with a string. He could play auto harp, guitar, banjo, harmonica, mandolin. He could play it all. And his daddy was pretty well off. And his daddy had bought him a new D18 and he had a brand new RB100. And of course he, he was into his D18 and I said, well, I'd like to play your banjo. So we got together once or twice a week, you know, and I got to play this RB100, you know, which made me start wanting a Gibson. And uh, anyway, that's that's how I got introduced right. to the banjo, right up to seeing my my first Gibson. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I was probably eight or nine years old. You were hooked. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and real bashful and everything like that. But uh, I never forget the first bow tie I saw. And, you know, had the arch stop tone ring and that big block down there said master tone on it. And man, I just sat there and looked at that thing. You know, you're on the way. It's like I gotta, 
I gotta have one of those, <laughs> you know, one of these days. So now I've got about 10 blow toys. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, sure. Everything you want, you overdo. Sure. You know? but, uh, but anyway, um, really the first live banjo player I ever saw besides Scruggs was Kenny Ingram. Mm -hmm. huh. Kenny's a few years older than me and he was working uh, he was working down in Dixon, Tennessee, which was about 40, 50 miles from my hometown, uh, with a guy named Earl McCullum and, and Dixie Ramblers, I think was their names. And they all put on these red sport coats, white shirts, black pants, and the red Kentucky Colonel ties. They looked just like Flatman's Grubbs. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I knew they weren't, but, but, but they, were, they looked just like them. You know? And Kenny was the very first person Besides Earl Scruggs, because Flat Scruggs came to our town when I was a kid. They worked our county fair yes. and um, and several shopping center things and Good. worked a tire, a Goodyear tire dealership one time. And of course I would be home on Saturday and they would announce that next Saturday we're going to be in our, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. Or next Wednesday, whenever. So you know, I'd go right to my parents. Oh, they're coming, you know. So we gotta go see them. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Well, and they took me. Yeah. And took me to the Opry and stuff like that. And and um, I don't know. It's just I just got bit real early, you know. And yeah. Earl Scruggs is the reason. Oh, uh, on Earl's uh, of all the uh, Earl Scruggs uh, songs that you've heard and that you play yourself. What would you consider to be maybe your favorite, and if you would play a a, a bit of that um, on the uh, RB3 Gibson flathead that you're holding right now? Okay. Well, my I can't really play it on this banjo because this banjo doesn't have tuners on it. But my probably my favorite would be Randy Lynn Ray. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? And you do a wonderful job and, on that. Well, thank you. Yeah. I've, I've got a, a new CD out. Well, cool. Uh, All right. With Johnny Warren. Hold it up. Oh man, yeah. Look at you. Know, yeah, we'll do a little plug here. A little plug here. And Johnny and I recorded this this tune. This is uh, our second volume two, mm -hmm. uh, second tribute to uh, his dad, Paul Warren. And we cut Randy Lynn Rag on this. I've got an old Flathead three. Uh, uh, wreath three that uh, I had Frank make me a neck for, and uh, and I put a set of Burlau Pittman mm -hmm. cams on it. Right, and, and you're off and running now. And yeah, so I'm a bit of a purist, you know, yes. uh, it, whenever that's possible. And, uh, and so anyway, we, we recorded that tune, and I had the cam tuners on there. And so anybody wants to hear what what my favorite Scruggs tune is, that's it. Right. And then we had Jerry Douglas and. And Johnny Warren and, and uh, Del McCurry and Brian Sutton and Kent Blanton and we yeah you we, got, we got a good wonderful group. wonderful group really good there. band yeah play a little ground speed all right yeah one of my favorites. Too. Oh gosh! And yeah, absolutely. Here at the banjo time, we're, we've got Don's banjo here today. What? Oh, Nelly. You here? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. here. Oh, cool. That's where I'm going. His it. son, Don Wayne. Right. So is Don Wayne. He's here. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. We'll try to get him in we'll here get in him just a minute. Don's banjo. Oh here. gosh! Yeah, absolutely. So now, uh, give, give us uh, uh, give us one of your favorite Reno. Ah, uh, Reno. Let me play. I'll play you a round or two of uh, Cumberland Gap, and I'll play around like, like in Scruggs style, and then change, yes. change oh, it all. Yeah, see the contrast style. between the two. Yeah, you yeah. bet.
Finest banjo players going. Oh, right thanks, there. Dave, appreciate it. Right there. <laughs> <laughs>